Chaplain Miner, welcome everyone. It's good to see many of you from the last few weeks coming back online. Uh, it's a joy to be with you. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful evening tonight. Let's open with a word of prayer and then I'll introduce our first speaker. Father in heaven, we pray that you'll put your hand upon our training this night. We thank you for the privilege of serving God and country. And we pray that you'll meet the needs on every heart that is within the sound of my voice this evening, those special burdens that are known probably only to you. I pray that you will uh, be their portion. Bless us as we study this night, and thank you for the privilege of uh, having uh, Chaplain Scheich with us this evening. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. It's my privilege to introduce you to the Chief of Chaplains for the United States Air Force, I also have the privilege of calling him my friend. And uh, we've had the opportunity to uh, spend time together and it's been my privilege to be able to be in his office uh, there in the Pentagon. But Chaplain Scheich is the head pastor for uh, the Air Force Chaplain Corps. And he's also a member of the special staff of the Air Force Chief of Staff and is responsible to uh, the care and the moral value and religious care of both the air and space force uh, of our personnel there. So it's good to have you here tonight, sir. Thank you that we are part of uh, your team as well, and we rejoice in you being able to have time to be with us. It's a privilege to introduce you to this Chaplain Staff College. Chaplain Scheich, the gavel is yours, sir. All right, thank you, Chaplain Murdoch and Chaplain Miner for uh, bringing us all together. Um, Hey, I just want to let you know what a privilege it is uh, for me to be with you here for a few minutes this evening. Um, it is a great privilege for me. And, and, uh, and also, let me say on the front end, thank you for what you do uh, day in, day out on behalf of, um, of the Civil Air Patrol, the, the, the young lives that you get to impress um, and, um, and develop and, and nurture and inspire uh, every day. Um, thank you for, for what you do. It, it really matters. I, you know, uh, when, when little Steve Scheich was uh, growing up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, I, uh, I took a, a liking and a very deep fascination to airplanes. I was a Boy Scout, and I loved, uh, I loved scouting, but I, I heard about Civil Air Patrol, and I knew that I wanted to... Uh, uh, learn how to fly as soon as I could, and and someone told me that Civil Air Patrol gave me an opportunity to uh, to kind of uh, learn about flying, maybe even take ground school and and, and get a few flights uh, under my belt. And I uh, I was absolutely intrigued by that, and so I I quit scouting Boy Scouts, and I jumped the fence and I went to Civil Air Patrol. Now there are some people who would question my judgment in that area, but uh, I never, never looked back. I absolutely loved my time, uh, albeit uh, fairly brief, maybe a year and a half, two years or so in Civil Air Patrol. But I, uh, I began ground school there and I began studying how to, how to understand the concept of flying and, and thinking about it and, and hearing <clears throat> a little bit about the Bernoulli's principle and some of the things that, that cause an airplane to fly and, 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 uh, and I was just intrigued by that and, uh, and then began to uh, get acquainted with some of the pilots in the local area. Local airport started uh, <clears throat> taking flying lessons and I wasn't uh, um, too long into my, uh, my adolescence that I was flying. Uh, I had a pilot's license and it was flying, but it all started, all started with Civil Air Patrol and I uh, am so grateful, um, grateful for that. I, uh, I enlisted into the Air Force after, after uh, high school, and I, uh, quite frankly, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I, I did know I wanted to get some, um, get some experience under me and also earn the, uh, the GI Bill to pay for college, and so I, I continued uh, uh, along those lines with that uh, journey in mind. And, I worked on uh, worked on F-15s in the, F in the in the Air Force. I was a, a maintainer, and I absolutely loved uh, aircraft maintenance. Um, but I also fell in love with the military at that time. And and um, getting out after four years, I uh, I went to college, uh, University of Wisconsin, and had a had a calling to uh, to ministry happen to me at that time. 
Um, although I had a pilot slot, I was at ROTC and I was really excited about flying for the Air Force, returning to the Air Force as a pilot. My, uh, my call to ministry uh, even surmounted that, which I today, to this day, I find uh, hard to believe. But um, so my journey has been uh, one of, uh, of kind of stumbling my way toward airplanes and then toward the Air Force and, and then and, and now into ministry. And I've been a chaplain now for for about 34 years, and um, I'm thinking about making it a career. But um, anyway, I am so thrilled with, uh, with my experience here and, and the, the, the great privilege that I have now of leading a chaplain corps of uh, more than 2,000 uh, chaplains and, and religious affairs airmen and contractors. And if we add in the Civil Air Patrol, that number net goes way up um, uh, beyond that. And, and so uh, as uh, Chaplain Murdoch and I have spoke and, and Chaplain Minor and I spoke uh, even before that, I am very interested in, in more fully incorporating um, you all into, uh, into the, the, the rhythms of the Air Force Chaplain Corps. And I'm not sure exactly how to do that yet, but I want you to know that the, the senior leadership of the Civil Air Patrol is, is interested in doing just that. And we are uh, working together and finding points of intersection. Uh, you're going to be hearing more about uh, from our uh, commandant of our schoolhouse, uh, more about some potential training opportunities. And, and I, I only envision that to increase uh, your opportunities to uh, come alongside us, to uh, learn with us, and maybe even from us, uh, but also to, uh, to really augment uh, what it is that, that we do as, uh, as, um, as total force, as active duty guard and reserve uh, chaplains in, in, in today's Air Force. So I'm, uh, I'm so very uh, fascinated by, uh, by what you're doing and the way in which uh, this official auxiliary of the Air Force is now uh, coming into, into full uh, fruition, I think, uh, as an auxiliary of the Chaplain Corps as well. And so, um, I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm so very excited about that. The question is, uh, one of the questions I was asked is, where are we going? What, what's, what's the future look like? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, when I became the Chief of Chaplains about two years ago, we did a 60-degree bank, um, I, I like to call it, a pretty hard bank. And, uh, and this turn was toward readiness. Uh, in the past, we've been about ministry, and we will always be about ministry. Uh, however, the, the, the focus on readiness is absolutely paramount, because quite frankly, um, in, in my world, uh, in, in the Pentagon, and uh, on Thursday, I'll be on Capitol Hill uh, debating with uh, members of Congress over certain religious freedom issues once again, but but in my world, taxpayers don't pay for men and women to put religious insignia on their uniform and tell people about Jesus or whoever their, their, their faith is um, uh, centered on. Uh, taxpayers don't do that. Taxpayers don't hire clergy to do ministry in the military. Uh, now, it may look that way, and it may look uh, like that from, from first glance, but what taxpayers pay for is is what lawyers call governmental interest. And governmental interest are those things that, that contribute to the good and welfare, good, goodness and welfare, and quite frankly, the readiness of, of the military. And so, so what we do in, in my 60 degree bank for the Chaplain Corps was to focus on readiness, both personal as well as professional readiness. And in, in doing so, um, We've kind of opened the doors to to all sorts of other ways in which we uh, not just justify ministry, but we we kind of launch ministry, if you will. And um, and this, by the way, is a whole lot less threatening to uh, to those who would be um, out to uh, to maybe undo us or challenge us uh, in the future. And I'm uh, I'm very interested too as the chief of chaplains and in doing whatever I can today to ensure that 20 years from now, the chaplaincy is still a vibrant part of our United States military. And so the, the focus on readiness is, is, that, is that as I, um, I like to say that, that the focus on readiness is kind of like the ticket to the dance. You don't get to the dance without having a ticket. Uh, but if you have a ticket, you get into the dance and then, then you can do your thing, right? 
And, uh, but if you don't have a ticket, you don't get in the dance and you don't get to do your thing. And so the, the readiness focus is quite frankly, the ticket uh, to the dance. It, it gets us in the room. It gets our elbows on the table. It gets us in the senior most uh, uh, levels of, of, uh, of thinking and planning and bureaucracy of the United States military, which is where I live. Um, but, but nonetheless, uh, even at the wing level, uh, a focus on readiness is a is an idea that a that a very very strong believer and an atheist commander both will get their arms around, and we can we can be of assistance to both of them. And so as we focus on readiness, we ask ourselves, well, how do we get there? How do we do readiness? How do we how do we develop the personal and professional readiness of airmen? And um, and I would say there are five things that 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 we do to get that uh, to get to that. And they all begin with R's. R's, uh, lately anyway, my favorite letter of the alphabet. Uh, the first thing we talk about is, is relationships. The first R is relationships. We focus on relationships. And of course, relationships go both vertical as well as horizontal. The first part of relationships, of course, is the vertical one, connecting um, God with others and, and, and others with God, connecting God with airmen and airmen with God, connecting uh, uh, Civil Air Patrol cadets uh, with God and 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 them um, uh, with uh, with God and 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 so it's this this connection with the divine. Uh, the word religion um, literally comes from the same root as the word ligament, and the word ligament, of course, a, a ligament is that is that muscle tissue that holds our bones together, holds the structure of our of our body together, into into re ligament or to religion is to reconnect um, individuals with what their souls were designed to be connected with from the very beginning of time. And so as we connect airmen with God and God with airmen, a higher power, uh, whether it be Christianity or Judaism or, or Islam or, or any other faith group, um, we, uh, we, we quite frankly connect them to what matters most. We connect them in ways that feeds their soul and, and grows them in a spiritual way. But as we know also, uh, relationships are not just vertical, but they're also horizontal. Many of our airmen, and I know many of our cadets, uh, uh, struggle with uh, relationships, whether it be family relationships or, or sibling relationships or friends or roommates and, and, and so forth. And so as we, as chaplains, uh, focus on relationships, both vertical and horizontal, um, we do our um, Civil Air Patrol cadets a, a, a huge favor in, in helping them set up for, uh, for, their, for personal and professional readiness uh, well into the future. And, um, and you know, a cadet who's, who learns at a young age, like I did, that my life matters, that my life um, has infinite possibility, that... Uh, that my life is not uh, defined by, by my enemies. My life is not defined by bullies and by those who, who would give me a hard time at school. My life is not defined by, the, by, by maybe some hard words uh, uttered by a parent or a teacher or a coach. Uh, my life is defined in much bigger terms. And as we as chaplains help our, uh, our uh, Civil Air Patrol cadets um, understand that, we set them up for a life of, of, of readiness, personal and professional readiness. They will be ready to handle anything that comes their way personally, and they will be successful in, 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 um, in, in other ways, in their professional ways as well. And so, um, so the first R is, is relationships. It's the one I, I get most excited about. Our second R is resilience. Resilience, of course, is, uh, is helping understand um, life from from kind of a, a, a reframing of, 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 uh, of life's occurrences. Uh, <clears throat> resilience is a focus left of the bang. It ha it's a focus on, on, on what can I do? What can I talk about? What, can I, what kind of ways can I mature my thinking um, when life is actually going pretty good? So that when I do have that dark night and that really hard moment in life, when I have that 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 just um, horrid horrid kind of chewing out from a from a coach or a teacher or a parent or if I have a 
a really, really bad day at school or, or uh, whatever it is that's going, uh, going to happen to me, that if I have learned some ways of reframing those things in my life uh, through uh, the resilience instruction, um, I am going to be far more prepared to deal with that and know that this too shall pass, that I can think, I can, I can find things to be grateful for. I can find ways in which I can look forward and beyond what is in, in front of me. And I can be hopeful for the future. Resilience gets us there. And oh, by the way, um, if you are a person of faith, um, just know that uh, all these basic resilience principles are found in all the great teachings of, of, of the world's religions. Um, there's nothing new here. Uh, but it's uh, it's a powerful thing, and uh, you know. By the way, we can teach these without the tripwires of of religion, and um, and we can get to that later on if uh, if given the opportunity. So we talk about relationships. We talk about resilience. We talk also about relevance. Um, it's important for me as a chaplain to always wonder: Am I being relevant to the people I'm speaking with? Do I know my audience? Do I know the young people? in whom I am trying to influence? Do I know what their life looks like? Have I listened well enough to where they are and what they struggle with? And, um, and, and so as I think about uh, relevance, I constantly ask myself, um, am I being relevant? I can, do, I can do extraordinarily excellent ministry and at the same time be absolutely irrelevant to the people who I'm trying to minister to. Um, we've got to focus on relevance. We've got to make sure that the message and the way in which we, we um, uh, procure and, and, and display the message of hope is, is relevant to the people we're speaking to. So we talk about relationships and, and, and uh, resilience and relevance. And uh, the fourth R is the R of respect. As a, as a white male, um, uh, I, have, um, I have been jarred and and quite frankly, um, challenged like never before to rethink the ways in which I have lived a, a privileged and, um, and, and quite frankly, um, 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 different life than many of my African American friends. And, um, and so <clears throat> one of the R's for the Air Force chaplaincy is the R of, of respect. Um, I am challenged in that. I am challenged every day to, to, to catch myself with racist kinds of thinking um, and, uh, and ways in which I too quickly come to a conclusion about an individual or, or find ways to, to uh, kind of name or categorize someone who acts in a certain way or drives a certain kind of car or, or does, a, um, <clears throat> does something. And I just... Um, and so we are getting after that in the Air Force Chaplaincy. We have a, a team getting together to uh, offer me courses of action. But the bottom line is we have got to be, and the Civil Air Patrol Chaplaincy has got to be models of respect. And um, <clears throat> so when, when those uh, cadets, when the Civil Air Patrol young men and women who are being so influenced by you all, when they want to know what right looks like, when they want to know what it means to be as respectful of everyone as Jesus was, um, I hope they have nowhere further to look than to you. We have got to be leaders in the area of respect, and um, and I I I am not going to rest until that is uh, that is the case. And so we talk about relationships, resilience, uh, relevance, respect. And of course, the, of course, the fifth R is is the one that's at the very base and the foundation of our of our Pentagon uh, diagram, if you will, or, uh, and that is religious respect, and and so and religious freedom. And so, one of the things that that we always will stand for, and one of the founding uh, reasons for a chaplaincy in the military, and I would argue also in the Civil Air Patrol, is to ensure <clears throat> that the religious freedoms of the persons we minister to are, <clears throat> are, are, are cared for. That we make sure that uh, when an individual has a, has a question about, about prayer, when there's a special holiday that, that a, a Jewish uh, cadet needs to participate in, when, um, when we have uh, um, Muslims participating in, in, um, 
in, in sacred moments of their, their calendar throughout the year, uh, that we do our very best to ensure their religious freedom. And we also ensure religious freedom of those who have no, no particular faith, are not aligned to a, a religion or a doctrine. Uh, we respect their religious freedom uh, by not, uh, you know, pushing our agenda on them. And, uh, and, and so, so these are the five R's. These are the things that uh, the chaplain corps hears me talk about a lot. And, um, and I'm uh, just uh, eager now to uh, take the last uh, eight minutes or so that we have together uh, and wonder if you have any questions for me. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Uh, Chaplain Williams, I'm gonna turn it over. Are there questions in Moodle, sir? Uh, yes, sir. We have really two basic questions. Uh, the first one is uh, CDIs, uh, Character Development Instructors Assisting the Air Force. Uh, I actually put one of the questions in Moodle and then somebody else expanded on it. Uh, about a year and a half ago, about a year ago at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, in meeting with the chapel staff, we were talking about volunteer opportunities for non-chaplains, such as flipping hamburgers for events, serving as uh, chaperones, guides, what have you, for young airmen uh, going down to Denver for for uh, activities, that type of thing, and using, officially using our character development instructors for such, uh, such activities. And we would like to explore that. Uh, what are your feelings, sir, about using our CDIs, uh, which will be soon called Chaplain Support Specialists, for ideas such as that? Oh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. And uh, you know what, the, 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 the best way to teach character development, to teach anything by it for that matter, is to jump in and, and, and or best way to learn about character development is to jump in and teach it and, um, and, and be about uh, serving others. And um, you know, there's, there are endorphins that are, that are emitted in our brains when we serve others, when we give someone a, a hot juicy burger off the grill that they weren't expecting. And, uh, and quite frankly, that sense of service is contagious. When others see us serving them, um, others get the idea that they too um, can, can enjoy that, uh, the privilege of service. So I, I couldn't agree more, I love the idea. Great, and then the other one also has to do with service. Uh, what one or two top things might a CAP chaplain need to do to prepare for direct service alongside USAS chaplains? And we'll, of course, expand that to reserve and guard as well. Yeah, well, the first thing to do would be to, uh, to uh, get connected with your endorser. And if you don't know uh, who your endorser are, is, there's uh, they're kind of umbrella organizations uh, that can help you kind of get started. But uh, the endorsing agencies are, are those agencies that serve as a, as a conduit uh, between churches and religious organizations and the military. So the first thing is to start with them and then eventually uh, to call one of our recruiters. And you can go on the, uh, the website, the uh, Air Force Chaplain Recruiting website, and you can find out to know how to get a hold of a recruiter and just say, hey, this is who I am. This is where I'm at. Um, tell me what the road looks like, and, and they, far better than me, will, will be able to help you. I think, sir, I was not quite as clear as I could have been. Our CAP chaplains are already endorsed and know their endorsers are better. Okay. What we're looking at is for chaplain assistance as CAP chaplains volunteering, what would, what would you like to have us do to prepare uh, for the congressional mandate that we have actually to be of service to the active duty side. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I totally misread that. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, it's my fault, sir, I'm sure. No, no, I, uh, 
I was too eager to recruit you, actually, of what I was trying to do here. But because, uh, um, by the way, we're growing. We're uh, we're going to be growing for the first time in more than 40 years. The chaplaincy <clears throat> is growing. So let me put that shameless plug in there for uh, for any of you interested in in active duty guard reserve. But uh, but having said that, um, <clears throat> you know that's something that I think uh, that that uh, you know Chap Murdoch, you and I need to to continue to work on. I think. Uh, you know, coming alongside uh, chaplains, especially if you've got a, a base in, in the, you know, not too uh, distant uh, proximity. Um, I think uh, funerals and, and helping with, uh, uh, with funeral ministry is a, is a huge issue as our, as our World War II vets are, are dying uh, at incredible rates every, every day and the uh, Korean War veterans are, are dying now and, and even some Vietnam veterans, <clears throat> and so uh, funeral support is a is a huge uh, piece. I think also, I I, I quite frankly, uh, Chapman Murdoch, I, I don't think we have even begun to explore the ways in which Civil Air Patrol chaplains could come alongside um, active duty Guard and Reserve chaplains and and find ways to uh, to augment one another's ministry and and in so doing, uh, learn from one another and grow each other's skills, and so. Let's, uh, let's make that a, a, a continued point of conversation. Yes, Thank sir. I, ag I agree, sir. And I think that uh, I'm open and I'll be in touch with you so we can try to set some parameters and times that we can get together and develop this further, sir. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Captain Parsons, you have uh, chat room questions. I do, sir. All right, our first question is, many of the chaplains are asking to use the five R's with attribution in chaplain's corners messages and in discussions with the cadets. Is that all right, chaplain? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, and then um, another question that we have is at last year's MCA conference, you mentioned the challenge of suicide in the Air Force. How has it gone over the last 11 months? Yeah, thanks, Chaplain Parsons. Uh, great question, and I, uh, I wish I had some good news for you in this area. We, we thought we were making some progress earlier in the year, and then COVID nineteen uh, hit us, and and a whole nother set is I don't need to explain to you a whole nother set of stresses and and uh, challenges uh, kind of beset our our airmen, and um, and right now, the last time I looked at the numbers, we're pretty close to last year, which was actually a record year for us uh, for the number of completed suicides. Um, you know, we are, we are getting after this. We are um, um, kind of adjusting some of the way in which we in the chaplaincy are addressing uh, suicide prevention. I really think that suicide prevention is more about resilience than it is um, teaching the signs and, 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 and so forth of a suicidal person. <clears throat> I, I fear that maybe in some cases we've done such a good job of, of uh, teaching the signs and indicators of a suicidal person that now those who are suicidal know exactly how to behave, um, how not to, how not to, to behave, I, maybe I should say. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> uh, quite frankly, uh, I, I have a, a debrief uh, with um, nearly every suicide um, a, a chaplain and religious affairs airman who responds to a suicide at a base. I debrief uh, about 90% of those. We have about an hour long conversation. We have a really hard conversation about that. And almost every time, I would guess 90% of the time, the person who died by suicide was was the life of the party was the one who who was the least expected to to ever um, do harm to themselves and and so we have a, a whole generation of actors and actresses that are extraordinarily good at holding within them what it is that's bothering them and tearing them to pieces and causing them to do self-harm and um and so as we get after resilience and as we get after the principles of, 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 of resilience, and as we, quite frankly, get after the principles of, of, of relationships, of healthy relationships, of knowing that you're not alone, that this is a, 
this is a big crazy world but you are never alone and you matter and uh, you matter to your God and you matter to people around you and and when that message is is spoken uh, loud and clear and time and time again I, I believe that is what will ultimately be our suicide prevention program and um, anyway we uh, Short answer, well, that was a long answer, but the short answer, Jessica, is that we've not made the kind of uh, progress we like. Uh, I hope that some of the things we're doing this year in uh, talking in, in uh, small group conversations with airmen and, and kind of refocusing on resilience more so than, than assist in some of the suicide prevention programs, I hope that we begin to see some, some, um, some value and in, in, and uh, a turn in, in the, the uh, numbers count uh, next year. Thank you for sharing that, Chaplain. Um, another question that we have is, as we look to more closely work with the U.S. Air Force chaplains, um, how can we help to get the word out through active duty and reserve, as well as guard chaplains, the resources that are available to them through CAP? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Chaplain Parsons. And, and uh, again, uh, Chaplain um, Murdoch and, and Chaplain Minor and others, uh, we, we owe you a, a, a better plan. And, um, you know, I would, love, I would love for our active duty chaplains to, uh, to uh, maybe consider uh, uh, hosting um, a, a little uh, get together, you know, with uh, local Civil Air Patrol chaplains and at least connecting in, in some way and beginning to have these conversations. And, and I think that the answer is to, you know, how we participate together, it might be a little different, you know, in, in from one base to another, but I think it all begins with uh, making those connections. And, uh, and I think it would be mutually uh, beneficial for, for all of us. Wonderful. Thank you. Those are um, all of the questions in the chat. Um, any other questions might be put up in Moodle um, where they might be more appropriately answered. Okay. Very good, sir. One last question uh, before we ask for the opportunity to take a, our class portrait with you. Uh, okay. We're going to do it kind of uh, in an unusual fashion here this evening, but the, but the last question would be about the endorsing bodies themselves, since you have such a very direct relationship. Do you think the re endorsing bodies that uh, currently serve our, our men and women in the military are reflective of the, of the nation that we have out there? Are, are, are they meeting the needs to supply all the religious needs of all our airmen out there from so many different uh, faiths? Yeah, you know, Tim, that, that is a, uh, that's a great question, and it's one that we work on and focus on uh, often. Um, you know, it, it, it won't come as a surprise to anyone listening to this that uh, there are certain kind of theological bents that are, that are more easily attracted to military service, service as a chaplain. Uh, and there are some that, quite frankly, are, are not at all interested. And so some of the the, the centrist and more left of center theologically uh, oriented um, groups have uh, have really been hard to uh, to kind of win over but we've been working hard at that uh, we've had uh, uh, we've had uh, influencer seminars at, re at our recruiting office in in San Antonio where we uh, our recruiters have actually gone to um, some of the some, some of the uh, seminaries that tend to be more liberal and, and, uh, and quite frankly, <clears throat> in some cases, frankly, outright uh, anti-military. Um, and we've had, uh, we've, our recruiters have gone into these places and asked for the most, uh, um, asked for the, the most uh, um, anti-military person you have on staff. Find, give us a, give us one of your influencers who quite frankly, never even thought <clears throat> that serving in the military as a chaplain would be a valid means of, of ministry. And, um, and so, so we, we, we have gathered groups of, um, of quite frankly, cynical naysayers and we brought them to San Antonio and we've, uh, we fed them and we, and we took them around and had them meet some of our airmen at basic training. And we, 
and they, they got briefings from some senior leaders and I've had a chance to be there a time or two. And, and, and it's amazing that the, the fact is it's so easy to have an opinion about something that you know nothing about. And, um, and, and so what we've done is we've planted seeds and quite frankly now, um, some of these seminaries are actually producing uh, chaplain candidates for us and we're, <clears throat> we're excited about that. Um, and, uh, but maintaining a healthy balance as best as we possibly can, uh, a balance of theological diversity that represents America at large is a very high priority for me. And I'm proud to say our, our recruiters are doing a great job at getting after that. Well, thank you so very much, sir, for appearing with us. Chaplain Murdoch, I'm going to uh, give the final word to you before we stop the video and begin the picture taking, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Again, I would also like to echo my appreciation uh, to Chaplain Scheich for being with us. I uh, appreciate very much him taking time to do so. And uh, before we, we uh, take our picture, I do want to have a word of prayer with you, sir. But I also want to challenge all of our people. Uh, when you're done here tonight, I ask you to please go to your calendar. What, uh, Chaplain Scheich, what time will you be on the Hill uh, talking with Congress? Oh, uh, let's see. I think it's uh, Thursday afternoon. All right. So, folks, I'm asking you to please uh, mark your calendars on Thursday afternoon and block out a time. I think about 2.30 on Thursday afternoon. Okay, 2.30 Eastern. Uh, right, right. 2.30 Eastern. I'm asking you please to block some time during that time frame uh, to be praying for Chaplain Shike as he's on the Hill and uh, working uh, for everyone with regard to the issues that they will be facing. And I promise you, sir, I will be doing that as well. Thank you so very much. It matters greatly. Amen. Well, let's have a word of prayer and then I'll give it back to Chaplain Minor and we'll get ready for this picture, okay? Uh, All right. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to spend time with Chaplain Shike. Thank you for his leadership. Thank you for his encouragement. And I pray that uh, even now you will be preparing his heart and his mind for his presentation on Thursday afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me. And I pray also, Father, that you will be preparing the hearts and minds of those to whom he will speak. I ask that you will be ha they will have hearts and minds that will be receptive to the information that he will be sharing. And I pray that you will give him uh, courage and boldness. And uh, as he does so respectfully, as he always does, I pray that you will use him in a powerful way on behalf of our airmen. And I pray that you will uh, just go before and meet those needs. I pray now for he and his family, give them a good night, give them a good uh, week together. We thank you for their uh, willingness to spend time with us, and we uh, ask that you will put your hand of blessing upon him in your holy name. Amen.